On Wednesday the 10th of October, something happens that one or two of you have been asking about. Uh, it happens to be my 45th birthday, but that's not what you've been asking about. It's also the ex-dividend date for a whole load of shares in the FTSE 100. And I've had a few people say, what is this ex-dividend date thing? And also, what are AGMs? And as a shareholder, what are the key dates I need to know about? So I thought in this video, we'd wrap up why ex-dividend dates exist and what happens and the effect on share prices, and also take the opportunity, because that's quite short, to just wrap up a kind of timetable as a shareholder. What are the kind of key dates that you'll find in the back of a set of accounts, and uh, why do they matter to you? So, what are the kind of key dates as an investor that it's well worth keeping an eye on as a shareholder? Well, if I could just mock up a quick timeline, I'm gonna use my, uh, what seems like my favorite company, Tesco, just randomly chosen, as an example of the sort of shareholder timetable, if you like, that's worth keeping an eye on. It's got one or two key dates in that as an investor I'd want to be aware of. Now, it all starts, I would suggest, with the financial year end. All right, companies prepare accounts. I've done some videos on those, balance sheets, profit and loss accounts. Do take a look at those videos up to a particular date. So the Tesco year end, slightly bizarrely, is the 25th of February. All right, so we'll assume this is uh, 2012. All right, and that's when their balance sheet and profit and loss account statements are drawn up to. What follows is something called the year end audit. So there's a bit of a gap. That's when some uh, highly paid professionals go in take a look through the numbers, interview a few people, and express an opinion on the financial statements. Who for? For you, shareholders in Tesco, right? If you happen to own shares in Tesco, that is. So they basically take a look at uh, all the activity during the 12 months up to the 25th of February, and they issue a one-page opinion that appears in the accounts for the benefit of shareholders. Right, and that takes some time. Now, other key dates that you'll hit are one is about there. Um, now, the last ex-dividend date for Tesco was the 25th of April. Okay, and uh, the next one for a batch of companies, including that one, is actually 10th of October. Um, so what we've got is an ex-dividend date for what? For the final dividend that's going to be paid out based on profits up to the 25th of February 2012. Okay, and 25th of April is what's known as the ex divi date. And it's a Wednesday, all right? It's usually a Wednesday because the so-called record date, which I'll explain in just a moment, is, for most UK companies, a Friday. In the case of Tesco, it was the 27th of April. Okay, for the interim dividend being paid this week, it's the Friday of this week, so the 12th, okay? So I'll explain what that means in a moment when we've got all the dates up. There's one more to go, or a couple more to go. There's the annual general meeting, annual general meeting, which has already taken place on the 29th of June. All these dates, by the way, are available in a firm's financial statements. And finally, there's the date the dividend is actually paid, which I'll call the payment date. You'll be glad to know that's the last date on my timeline. The payment date for the final dividend, I'll explain all these in just a moment because I'm going quite quickly, 6th of July. Okay, now, what does all of this mean? Well, I covered the first date here, the, the year end, so Tesco prepares its accounts every 12 months to a date um, ending the 25th of February. All right, then there's the annual audit once a year where the auditors rush in and check the numbers and interview Tesco staff and so on and try and come up with an opinion on whether the accounts up to that date are true and fair. No, they just give an opinion. It's not an absolute 100% certification. Then as a shareholder, you've got a whole raft of dates spread out between April and July. So what's going on here? Well, first of all, before a final dividend relating to this set of accounts, so this is the final dividend for the year ending 25th of February 2012, can be paid 
Yeah, well, there's quite a gap here, 20th of February to 6th of July. So before the final dividend can actually be paid, okay, certain things need to happen. Number one, working backwards, an annual general meeting where shareholders of the company, that's anyone who owns a share, all right, gets to vote on whether they agree with the final dividend that Tesco's proposing to pay, okay, because shareholders might not. Tesco might say we're proposing to pay 10p a share, and there might be a revolt at that point, with shareholders saying, for example, they want more. It's theoretical, it doesn't normally happen, but at an annual general meeting of shareholders amongst other business, you get the opportunity to say whether you agree with the dividend, and if you do, a resolution is passed, as it's called, and the dividend is then duly paid. Just a word about annual general meetings. Every shareholder has the right to turn up and to vote. Okay, you don't have to turn up to vote. You can do it by proxy, as it's called, which means you're not physically present at the meeting. All right, you can vote through somebody else, but you can, even as somebody who owns one share, turn up at an AGM and vote on key resolutions, matters that affect the company, including things like, do we reappoint the same auditors? Shall we reappoint the directors? And do we agree with the final dividend that the board of directors is proposing to pay us? All right, now those meetings, I have to be honest, are not like the meetings you've probably seen in films like Wall Street featuring Gordon Gecko striding up and down with crowds and crowds of shareholders getting very angry and waving bits of paper in the air. Most annual general meetings involve a large room booked by the company, a few men in suits looking fairly glum in the front row. There'll be the representatives of the big institutions that own most of the shares in that company. And then you'll have rows of empty seats and at the back, a couple of people who've got one voting share in Tesco and like the fact it's a warm room with free food thrown in. All right, so generally AGMs are really quite staid affairs, but in theory, every shareholder in the company has the right to turn up and vote on key matters. And votes these days are often done by the larger companies using a kind of electronic polling system, but the bottom line is, or a show of hands, but the bottom line is if you turn up and exercise the right to vote, um, then your vote counts, albeit you'll probably be outvoted by the men at the front uh, wearing the suits who represent the big institutional shareholders who probably carry more voting rights, right? But as a day in the life of a shareholder, the annual general meeting is quite an important date. And if there's demand for more about general meetings, there may well not be, I'll happily do a further video on it. Right, tracking backwards. What are these two dates then? And why did I start this presentation by talking about the 10th of October? Well, on this timeline, I'm talking about the 25th of April. Well, here's the thing. What Tesco do um, on the 27th of April is called a record date. Technically, what happens is their, these days, electronic register of shareholders is closed, all right? And they basically say, well, if you're on the electronic register of shareholders on that date, the record date, then we'll look to pay a dividend to you on the 6th of July, once it's been approved at the AGM. In other words, they literally close the books. And kind of in the old days, you know, look down the ledger and see who's gonna receive the dividend. All right, they give themselves a bit of time to do that. Um, now, why then, if that's on a Friday, Friday evening, if you like, is the ex-dividend date Wednesday, 25th of April, okay? And the ex-dividend date is all of the Wednesday. And that means there's a three working day gap between the ex-dividend date and the books closing, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. All right, well, that's simply, for, for the technicians out there, if you like, a function of the fact that if you buy a share in the UK, it normally takes three working days for your name to appear as the legal owner on the relevant register. All right, why three working days? It's just a convention, all right? Compare it to buying a house, okay? How long does it take between agreeing the price and getting your name on the land registry register? Well, it could be months. Okay, in the case of shares, which are registered in the UK, it's just three working days. And there are moves, I understand, to try and bring that down. But at the moment, it's three working days. So, here's the point. If the book's gonna be closed on Friday night, and your name needs to be on the register by Friday night, the logic says the ex-dividend date needs to be the previous Wednesday. So there are three working days. All right, so that, that tells anyone, you know, if you buy the share up until Tuesday evening, under normal, what's called T plus three settlement, your name will be on the register by Friday night, which means you will be receiving the dividend paid on the 6th of July. Now, practical consequence of all this from a share trading perspective is this. 
up until the 25th of April, up until but not including the Wednesday, okay, the shares trade cum divi, ghastly language, uh, from and including the 25th of April, right the way up to the payment date, they trade ex divi, and then after that, they start trading cum divi again. What does that mean? Okay, well, a little bit of Latin terms being thrown in here, but with dividend and without dividend, cum divi, ex divi. Okay, what we're effectively saying is that if you buy the shares here, or there, all right, basically, under normal circumstances, you are buying them without entitlement to receive the next dividend. Okay, you're too late. Okay, you haven't got in before the ex dividend date, all right, which is there. All right, and all that means is that you'd expect to pay a bit less for the shares than someone who bought them here. So what happens? Well, batches of shares that have the same ex-dividend date correct down in price as they cross that line. All right, there's a little share price drop. Not a massive one, but you will get a share price drop. Don't panic, okay, as you see that share price drop happen. It's just a mechanical reflection of the fact that if you buy the shares on this side of the line, you're not going to get the next dividend. You've missed the cutoff under normal circumstances, or as someone who bought literally the day before will do. Okay. Now, that's true. That sort of that sort of ex div period runs and runs and runs and runs and runs until the dividend is paid, and then the shares trade uh, cum divi again. All right. So, just worth bearing in mind that you get a little mechanical correction, but it just reflects the fact that the shares have changed from being cum divi to ex divi. Now, why am I talking about the twenty fifth of April? when I started the video talking about uh, the 10th of October. Well, most companies pay two dividends a year. They pay a final dividend relating to the previous year, and they pay an interim dividend relating to the current year. All right, so uh, we've got a batch, basically, of interim dividend payments coming up, okay, um, this week for companies that, uh, like Tesco, for example, that are around halfway through their financial year, which started, remember, back here. Uh, hence, you go through this kind of X and cum dividend rigmarole a couple of times a year. Okay, so you'll see it happening around the time of the final dividend, and you'll see it happening around the time of the interim dividend as well. All right. So, message from this video is a very simple one. As a shareholder, worth knowing your rights. Okay, worth knowing certain key dates in relation to dividends, and not worth worrying too much about what happens twice a year when shares cross the X dividend line. To download this free video to your favourite mobile device, find us on iTunes by searching for Money Week. And the entire video archive is also available free, just visit moneyweek.com.